Okay, this is the continuation of the video tutorial on Cori's SAS. We're looking at a monthly projection model, and in the first video tutorial, we went through the creation of an income statement, a balance sheet, cash flow statement, uh, and a sales section. And in the very last part of that, I made an error, which I need to correct right now. First, um, I made two errors in calculating the depreciation on the cash flow statement. First of all, the, app, the reference to the assumption section should be an absolute reference, and I'm uh, holding down the command button, hitting T to do that. And then secondly, you can see we've created a circular reference, which didn't show in the prior model because we had not populated that cell. So we're going to resolve that by uh, making this, the cell reference refer to the prior month, which should make that perfectly legal. Um, I'm copying and pasting to the depreciation line. And you can see here that we've completely filled in, done the copying and pasting to all other sections of this model, which fixed the depreciation line. But then you look at that depreciation number of $75 million. That seems a bit high. So there's another error here, which I need to correct. And that error has to do with the calculation of net fixed assets. And what I showed you previously is that the calculation looks like this. It is the prior month's balance uh, minus capital expenditures. Now, capital expenditures are an assumption, only 10000 a month, and entered as a negative number. That appears to be correct. So that means essentially plus capital expenditures. But as we all know, net fixed assets are the prior month's balance plus capital expenditures minus depreciation. And I had it as a plus to fix that uh, sign change or sign problem. And then copy it over the net fixed assets number, ah, the joys of modeling, uh, copy it forward all 60 months, uh, you should have a model that works. And in fact, see that assets and liabilities balance, which they should, and that is a first test. I'm going to assume everything else makes sense, and if it doesn't, uh, we'll see if we can fix it as we go forward. Um, Return calculations. Well, the first thing you want to know when you're selling a business uh, is what the business is going to sell for. And in this uh, in this formulation, we look at whether the this month E3, uh, the number of this month is one. If E3 equals uh, the month in which we assume the company is sold, and that is an assumption, number E36, which is shown here as the month of exit. So we're saying if this month month one, is the month of exit, which it is not, then what we want is 12 times because we're going to annualize the monthly sales of the company at the point at which we sell it. Since this is a recurring revenue model, that's not an unusual thing to do. Maybe a little aggressive, but it is, a, is not unusual. And we're going to say it's 12 months times E54, sorry, E34, which if we look back to E34 is the assumed uh, multiple of EBITDA, in this case 12. So, it, so we're saying if we're in the month of sale, then take, uh, take, sale, uh, take uh, EBIT and uh, multiply it by the EBIT multiple. Otherwise, show the number uh, of the uh, exit as zero, uh, which it does. So we show nothing here, but if we go all the way out to the month in which we're projected to sell, which is month 60. Hmm, we have no calculation. Oh, because we haven't, because we simply have not, uh, sorry, because we simply haven't propagated that forward. Uh, let's see if it works the way I think it's supposed to. We're going to copy that, that logic forward to the 60th month, and it should show up in the 60th month only which it does. So if all things go well, the EBITDA selling for an EBITDA multiple of, of 12 will yield $267 million for the sale of the business. Now, um, the company's going to have a lot of cash on its balance sheet in the year that it sells. And it's typical uh, not to give all that cash to the acquirer. You figure out what the company needs to run. In this case, uh, there's an assumption that the and the assumption in the assumption section is the company really only needs 
a million dollars on its balance sheet when it's sold. As you can see, there's 9.6 million. So it's going to leave a million and give 8.6 million to the owners of the business as part of the transaction. And that calculation is done simply this way. That is, if this month, E3, equals the month of sale, E36, then take the amount of cash and subtract 1. Uh, otherwise, it's 0. Uh, the proceeds then of the sale of business is uh, the calculation um, of sale of business uh, um, plus the excess cash. Uh, other, in the month of sale, otherwise this number will be zero. Again, we'll propagate this forward. Now to calculate, uh, according to the venture capital valuation mo model, uh, you need to apply a present value in this month of what the company is going to sell for in later period. In this case, the company can sell at the end of the fifth year or the 60th month. So it takes um, the absolute value of the company in the month that it sold, BL148, uh, and then divides it by a present value factor uh, based on uh, assumptions input, in this case uh, an 80% discount rate, uh, uh, calculated down or, or adjusted to be a monthly rate. You could simply take 80 divided by 12, wouldn't be perfectly accurate, but it would probably be close enough for government purposes. Um, since we don't have that, uh, all, so we don't have proceeds of the business calculated, that number is not going to show yet. But let's propagate all this forward and show you how the present value gets calculated uh, for every month using this formula. So propagating all four of these rows forward. Uh, we get sale the business. There's uh, for two hundred sixty dollars million dollars. There's the eight million of excess cash. There's the adjusted proceeds of the sale of the business, and then the present value factor again in the year that it's sold. It's worth two seventy six a, a month before it's sold. It's worth a little less and a little less and a little less according using a discount factor of eighty percent. And in fact, in the very first month of this projection, the present value of the company is. $15 million. Um, using that logic. Now this is the valuation, this is the venture capital valuation method which has some uh, some problems but it is a, a certainly a defensible way uh, to think about how um, the ownership, how anybody need, how an investor calculates the ownership that they need. In this case, you given all the assumptions, the, the um, investor wants 32.5%. How does it get there in, in logic? Well, um, the company, uh, the, the investor is investing $5 million. So uh, if you invest $5 million and the present value of the company is, uh, including the $5 million, is 15, then what you want is 32.56%. 5 divided by 15.36 is that number. Uh, the new shares that are implied uh, are calculated according to uh, logic shown in the uh, in the case, and I won't spend time deriving this formula, but this is what the formula is. Uh, the dollars per share implied, again, is uh, simply the new money uh, divided by uh, the number of new shares. In this case, 5 million divided by 482,000 shares amounts to uh, $10.36 per share. Now, the convertible note also calculates in this first month. Let me show you that logic. Uh, if w if this month is the month in which the convertible note cal uh, converts, then uh, the logic says take E39, which is, I believe, the original balance of the, yes, the principal of the convertible note, adjust it for interest that's due. In this case, we're assuming that the company, uh, th that um, the convertible note was financed a year earlier. In this case, it takes a year plus uh, plus one twelfth, so thirteen twelfths of a year. Uh, and um, E40 here is the, um, that should be an absolute reference. Um, uh, and the amount to be converted then is the $250,000 original balance plus interest. The conversion price per share at a 30% discount to the per share of the uh, of the new instrument since the 
per share value of a new instrument is uh, 10.36, and a 30% discount is simply 8.29. The new shares that are then uh, issued to convertible note holders uh, is the amount of the principal and interest divided by the conversion price per share. So those are the new shares. So we got two financing uh, events going on in this very first month. One is that you have the convertible, the A series preferred stock being issued and the convertible note converting into that Series A stock at a 30% discount. The uh, capitalization table then, uh, we're going to uh, assume that the company had a million shares outstanding previously. 15% uh, of that was in options uh, and 85% uh, was in common stock. Uh, those numbers are carried forward. Uh, actually, they will be carried forward in every year going forward. The convertible note, we've just calculated the number of new shares uh, of preferred issue, uh, common issue to the, uh, excuse me, convertible issue, uh, convertible into common at a one-to-one -one ratio. So we know what, we know how many uh, new shares of preferred at a one-to-one -one ratio are being issued for the convertible notes. We just calculated that. Here's the Series A. Again, we just calculated that. And the Series B hasn't been issued yet. So you have essentially a cap table of how many shares uh, expressed in terms of common equity as if the preferred shares had converted into equity at one-to-one, -one, which is the way cap tables are usually done. And uh, you see a total number of new shares and the division of how those shares are um, uh, are calculated, are summed up. The convertible note holders then uh, are going to exit at um, uh, at uh, 0.0328 divided by 15156 uh, uh, times the ultimate sale value of the business. The Series B holders have a similar calculation. Uh, and of course, there are no Series C holders, but if you have had a Series C assumption, you could incorporate this in very much the same way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and propagate these forward so you can see how all these numbers are calculated going forward. Now you'll see the cap table populate itself in all future years. And that should make it a little bit clearer. Um, I think we've discussed all these elements, so I won't go into them again. Uh, the exit calculations are simply the numbers you need to figure out what the internal rate of return for everybody's investment is. That's actually given by your assumptions. Uh, if you go back to the assumptions section, you'll see that the Series A has a discount rate of 80%. So it was calculated according to what we think the exit value is, brought back at an annual rate of 80%, so their IRR should be around 80%. It should be exactly 80%, in fact. And the Series B discount rate uh, is similarly calculated. What this uh, setup does is calculate what's known as the cash on cash return. In other, words, it, in other words, it looks at the amount originally invested and it looks at the amount actually uh, realized by a given security. And I'm going to populate this forward to show you what I'm talking about. Here we go into the 60th year. So in the si 60th month, excuse me. At the end of the fifth year, uh, let's look at the convertible note holders. They get uh, that number divided by that number expressed as a percentage. And if you want to know exactly what that is, you can see it right here. So 2% of the company. Um, we don't need that calculation, so I'm going to attempt to get rid of it. Uh, and the convertible note real holders realize, in aggregate, 5.73 for their $250,000 investment. The Series A holders are, should be calculating something here, and unfortunately, it is not. And there is uh, something wrong with this calculation. And uh, that needs to be fixed, and I will do it right now. Uh, if what, it said, what this logic says, that if the year that we're in, BL60, equals uh, the year in which we're supposed to exit, which it does. This says minus E44, which is obviously nonsense. I wonder what it refers to. 
it refers to uh, oh, the original principal amount. That is obviously a glitch. It should be the percentage of the company that's owned by Series A holders, which is this number divided by the total number of shares. So that's the percent that the company owns, or that the Series A holders own, times the proceeds. And the proceeds, in this case, we calculated earlier as proceeds of the sale of business. I wonder if the problem is that E43 is not the right number. Okay, we're still looking at... Uh, it should be referring to the, sale, the month of exit, which is E36. So let's go back and fix that. Uh, the choice of financial modeling. So if this equals the year in which we exit, not the year in which we finance, obviously, then um, you can see collectively the Series A holders get $84 million. I'm just going to populate this backwards because the joys of Excel allow you to do that. And it should calculate correctly. Okay. Uh, the Series B holders um, look like they're all set. And I think we're ready. So of the total proceeds of $276 million, the investors get a, collect a collective 84 plus 5, which would be just under 90 plus 11, so about $100 million. The remainder of it goes to the equity of the original founders and the, um, uh, and the option holders. So the convertible note returns uh, should be slightly better than the Series A returns. The Series A returns should be exactly 80%. And I'm simply going to accept this uh, uh, discounting model uh, uh, conclusion of 78. It's close enough to 80 for what I'm trying to accomplish. The cash on cash multiple is almost 17 times their money. The convertible note holders who originally invested $250,000 are getting almost 23 times their money and a, an IRR, which is slightly higher than the Series A holders. Uh, the Series B holders, which in this case put in $2 million at the end of month 24 and realized 11.7 times their money are making a cash on cash multiple of 5.8%. And the IRR calculation simply doesn't work because it looks all the way back at the original time. To get this right, you would have to simply, I think manually is the right way to do this, uh, simply discount the stream that starts here and ends uh, with the uh, sale of the business in month 60. Since I have not done that and have no intention of fixing this model right now, um, you can see how that works in principle. Almost everything else here is simply a, um, a check. Here is the percentage ownership of the business. It starts at uh, the common stock owners or the founders owning 85%. They get diluted every time that there's a financing so that uh, by the end of the forecast period they get 53%. The option holders get, which started at 15%, end up with 9.5%. The convertible note uh, holders get 2% of the company, slightly over. Series A holders get 30, that, that started off, as you may recall, with 32% of the company, have been diluted by the Series B and now own 30% of the company. The Series B holders got 4.2% of the company when they put up their money at the end of the 24th month. So that shows you uh, how to construct this model. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I think you've gotten some direct experience with how, um, how to fix glitches when you see them.